Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Phil Garnett. I'm president of the Illinois Coal Association. I want to welcome you all here today. This is one of six hearings that the Office of Surface Mining is having on their stream protection rule. Uh, we're here to oppose that rule. We believe that it's a rule uh, looking for a, a solution or a problem. Uh, the, uh, the Office of Surface Mining took six years in, in secret to put this rule together, uh, and they've given us uh, the first 60 days. Of, we went, had one good piece of good news today. Uh, they did extend that another 30 days, but we still think this is inadequate to review a document. There are three separate documents, a total 6,000 <coughs> pages of text. And we don't have a red line version uh, to, to check this. It's a massive overhaul of the mining regulations uh, in, for, by the federal government. And it's in, in an area where there is no need. Uh, the Office of Surface Mining each year does an evaluation of every state's regulatory performance. And the average across the, state, uh, across the nation is 90% have uh, no impact, uh, non-mining impacts. Illinois, I think, last year was something like 85%. And so there's no need for this. Uh, the other illegal thing that OSM did was that they didn't consult with their state regulators who were charged with uh, implementing SMACRA in their states. So we have a few speakers here today. Uh, we also will go downstairs and attend the public hearing. Uh, fortunately, we have the first 31 slots. Uh, that of the speakers, I think they're up to 50. You will be limited to two minutes. But I wanted you to hear from some people that, that, uh, that really support coal and, and really depend on coal. Before I do that, though, I want to recognize three people here that are from the staffs of uh, Illinois congressmen. We have Deb Detmers from Congressman Shimkus's office. We have uh, Philip Lazane from uh, Representative uh, Rodney Davis's office and Mike, uh, Matt Rice from Representative Boss's office. The, good, the other piece of good news, we did get good news today. We got an extra 30 days to respond. Also, the House Natural Resources Committee passed the STREAM Act, uh, House Resolution 1644, which will stop this nonsense. It requires transparency. It requires studies for OSM to go through uh, before they enact any type of uh, rulemaking. So first, I'd like to call up two state representatives from Illinois. They're freshmen, but you'd never know it by their support of coal. Uh, they've done a great job. They're, they're two representatives that I can call on to, for our help in, in the legislature. First, I want to call up Representative Ch Terry Bryant from the 115th District. Terry? Thank you. As Phil said, uh, my name is Terry Bryant. I represent the 115th District, which is uh, uh, deep southern Illinois. And I'm here today uh, to join in calling for more time on the com uh, for the comment uh, a portion uh, on this proposed federal, federal regulations on capping carbon emissions for coal-fired power plants. Um, I recently signed on as a co-sponsor of Illinois, uh, Illinois H, uh, House uh, Resolution 687, a measure that urges the federal government to increase uh, the comment period on the draft stream prote uh, protection rule to 180 days. Barack Obama pledged as a candidate to bankrupt and destroy the coal industry under the guise of curbing man-made climate change. Obama's taking direct aim at good paying jobs and working to eviscerate the average working family's budget by causing, in his own words, electricity prices to necessarily skyrocket. The federal government's Department of Interior has proposed a new draft stream protection rule which seeks to amend or change 450 different regulations on coal mines. The proposed rule changes are 2,000 pages long and seek to change everything about the way surface and underground mines operate. This type of overreach by the federal government is jobs killer. Illinois is unique in its position in America in regard to coal. Illinois has America's largest reserves of bituminous coal, enough uh, coal to um, provide electricity to the entire continental United States for 50 years. I will continue standing up against Barack Obama's attacks on sustainable and affordable energy production. We have to have more time for Illinoisans to give their input on these ridiculous, overreaching, jobs-killing proposed rules. I've consistently in the past and will continue in the present and future to support policies that provide for uh, growth in fossil fuel industry in southern Illinois. We need affordable energy and good paying jobs. Coal mining provides both. The average coal mining salary is $85,000 in Illinois. 
The folks that do this work earn their money, and we can't afford to lose the good paying jobs or the energy sustainability that coal provides. I stand in support of the coal industry, and again, we're grateful for the extra 30 days that was given. Um, HR 687 asks for 180 days. We want that full 180 days. Thank you, Representative Bryan. And I probably should have mentioned it. It probably doesn't uh, need mentioning. But the college students you see behind us here, uh, this is their future, too. Uh, and I know their ears perked up with the average salary of $85,000, but we have to make sure that we have those jobs when you get out of college. We have college students here from uh, SIU Carbondale Mining Engineering and, uh, and from Rolla as well, so we appreciate their support. Next, I'd like to call up Representative Avery Bourne from the 95th District in Illinois. Avery. Thank you. I'm Avery Bourne and I represent the 95th District of Illinois. And I, like Representative Bryant, we're proud to stand with members of both sides of the aisle and in both chambers in Illinois to support House Resolution 687, which basically asks that we get more time to comment on this regulation. Illinois has enough coal, like Representative Bryant said, to to provide energy for 50 years. But also Illinois is the largest exporter of energy in the Midwest. And Illinois provides really great jobs for my district, the 95th, and people that I know personally. I'm proud to have two coal mines in the 95th operating. And this is enormous for us, not only in providing jobs, but especially in my home county of Montgomery County, which consistently has one of the highest unemployment rates in Illinois. And so not only is this troublesome on the coal industry level, but it affects families, it affects our communities, and it certainly affects our state. We fear that these job losses will be detrimental, and we're asking that we need more time. We need more time to comment, we need more time to evaluate, and we certainly need more time to demonstrate how detrimental this will be to everyone in Illinois and to our nation who is consistently reliant upon um, coal and energy and a brighter future for all of us. Thank you, Representative. Representative Bryan, I'll give you back your card so you don't lose your place in line. Uh, next, I'd like to call up a uh, longtime coal person. He's seen a lot in his, uh, I hate to say how many years, Steve, uh, I'm going to say 30 plus years, I'll be kind. But, but Steve, Steve's done it all. He's the CEO of Nighthawk Coal. Uh, this is a company uh, that, uh, that, that had to struggle early on, and, and every day is a struggle for, for some of the smaller producers. But Steve's done it all. Uh, he's had to comply with uh, these regulations for a long time. And Steve, I'd like to hear a few comments from you. Good evening. <clears throat> like um, <clears throat> Phil said, my name is Steve Carter. I'm the president of Nighthawk Coal and the founder. Uh, I guess I have the unique probably position of a lot of, from a lot of people here. I got started in this business back in the late 70s when we had a president, Jimmy Carter, who asked to have a balanced sense of energy. He pleaded for people to get in the coal industry. I got in the coal industry. Forty years later, a senator from our state in Illinois has bucked that trend and his representative Bryant said pledged to bankrupt the coal companies. Unfortunately, he's done a pretty good job of it. This act before us, while we don't understand the full impact, may be the final straw. I take this personally. Both my sons work for me. We started this business um, on our hands and knees digging in 1998. We've progressed over 17 years. Uh, we're a fairly strong company now. We have 700 employees and contractors. And I can tell you, they, they all came into this position after all the coal mines left in the 90s. They left in the 90s because the federal government passed acid rain legislation that in essence mandated that uh, utilities convert to low sulfur western coal. So we transported that coal a thousand miles back taking away the power plants we used to serve. We've struggled against that, and we've, we've, uh, we've battled and, and, and carved out a business that uh, we're very proud of. We don't need further regulations to destroy what we've developed. This paper here from the Southern Illinoisan last weekend celebrates the jobs that our employees have. 
the high paying jobs that Phil talked about, but they're more than just jobs. They're a sense of purpose. Our men love the coal industry. They depend on it. There is no other industry in that area. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call up Roger Dennison. He's the Director of Business Development and Government Affairs of Foresight Energy. Roger. <clears throat> Again, Roger Dennison. <clears throat> I've been in coal mining for over 35 years, done a little bit of everything, started out as these kids want to in the coal mine, so you're going to pay me how much to do what. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's how I started. I've done every job there was to do there, worked my way up through the organization, to eventually being president, have opened new coal mines, have opened, reopened coal mines that closed. And as Steve said, I watched the 90s basically decimate Illinois coal. We went from 9,000 coal miners to 3,000 overnight. And that was from the actions of the EPA with the Clean Air Act. Uh, as these folks are showing you up here nationwide, 40,000 jobs since 2011. This rule that's proposed today, it's estimated it'll be 80,000 jobs in this industry. This was the worst thing that can happen to our industry. There is no example in Illinois currently right now with any stream, with any anything, where the current statutes and the current regulations do not protect them or take care of them. You can ask our regulators, which these folks did not ask when they drafted this rule, on that topic. There are no examples of it. There's absolutely no environmental gain to this. Um, it is impossible to obtain new permits, renewals of permits, and permit revisions under the way that this current proposal is drafted. So it definitely is going to hamstring and kill our industry. This rule says that when you look at what the impact could be it's from 30 to 41 percent of all the recoverable coal in the U.S. will stay in the ground. We don't have that. The impact of that could be 14 to 20 billion dollars a year annually to our nation and you're talking four or five billion dollars more annually than just tax revenues when you look at just what happens in Illinois, in our state. It's going to affect every citizen. What people miss here, this stuff they do, it'll affect every citizen. Nobody will go untouched by this thing because anybody in business, electricity rates will go up. If you take coal out of the picture that's affordable, that's reliable, that's environmentally sustainable, and you take it out of the picture and drive it down, you're going to replace it with what? And it's going to affect everybody. And when you look at that, it's going to disproportionately affect minorities, people on fixed income, um, all the folks that are out here trying to make a living. And it's going to affect these kids' kids. This is going to be irreversible. They'll take decades to even figure out what went on when they do this crap. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And it's going to impact everybody. And it's disproportionate to all the folks, and you can't push coal out of this energy mix. It's just what we talked about earlier. As Steve said, you throw stuff out of balance. This all started because somebody said we need to balance. We need to figure out what we need to do to balance energy for the United States. We all forget 911 and all the Homeland Security stuff we did. Coal was a big part of that. Coal built this country. Coal builds the windmills. You know, steel comes from somewhere too. But it's it's really bad. And again, it's very irreversible. It was done in a vacuum over six years. They didn't even talk to the state regulators that regulate these programs in these states. They did not talk to industry. I do believe they've talked to a lot of NGOs on it, you know, on getting input to this thing. But it's absolutely terrible. There's thousands of pages that were dumped on us. There's missing parts of this. There's studies they talk about that you can't find. There's data is just not here. And then they gave you 60 days to comment on it, which is crazy. Over 475 statutes are affected by this thing. So they grossly misinterpreted or misstated the impacts to society and the cost of this rule and what it's going to have on it. And again, the thing you never took into account, it's these kids' as kids I, that need to go in that equation too. It's not just us folks sitting here. It's going to impact the next generations to come from these goofy decisions. And it was an intentional driven by Obama's administration to get coal out of the mix. So this SPR needs with, withdrawn. It's not right. It's not the thing to do. And it's going to be a killer, not only to coal, but again, it's going to affect everybody that's living and breathing right now and in decades to come in our nation. Thank you.
Thanks, Roger. And I just want to drive home that last point because it kind of goes full circle. We're talking about if you use less coal, coal right now produces about 40 percent of the energy of this country. This is down from 50 percent a few years ago. If you can't mine coal, then you can't burn coal. So that closes down coal burning power plants. So it doesn't only affect, this, these aren't jobs just in coal mining, but coal burning power plants. There's only two types of base load power, serious types, coal and nuclear. Natural gas is coming on, but when people say, we'll just put up more windmills, they have to know windmills and solar are not available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 <coughs> days a year. That's base load energy, and that's not renewables. I'm all for renewables. Let's put up some more windmills. But just know that they only work a third of the time, and they cost six times the amount of the, of the energy off of coal. So you're not only losing jobs from the coal industry, you're losing jobs in power plants, and you're driving up the cost of energy that's going to hurt this economy. And it's built this country over 200 years. So I want to thank everyone for attending. Thank everyone for, for being up here uh, this afternoon. We're going to go down, and we're going to give them hell. Thank you.